Hello, welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to cover all the details of how to implement Firebase messaging into a Flutter project, send and receive remote messages from Firebase, and display notifications on Android and especially iOS devices, for both cases when the app is in the foreground and background states. To start, let's create a new Firebase project and type a sample name for it, like push notifications sample. Since we don't need Gemini, we can disable it, as well as Google Analytics. Once the project is created on Firebase, Go to your Flutter project, open Terminal and add Firebase Core plugin. We also need Firebase Messaging plugin to receive push notifications. For displaying notifications in the foreground, add Flutter Local Notification plugin as well. Now all three plugins that are needed were added into PubSpec YAML file with the latest versions. I'm going to use Firebase command line interface or CLI. It will significantly speed up the process of dealing with Firebase services. If you haven't installed it, check the official documentation on how to do this. By typing Firebase login, check if you are authenticated. Now activate Flutterfire CLI. To configure Flutter app to connect to already created Firebase project, type Flutter Fire Configure. Select the project that you have previously created on Firebase console. Make sure that Android and iOS are selected. Firebase plugin has created and configured Android and iOS applications on Firebase console and fetched Google service info.plist file for iOS module and Google services.json file for Android. Now let's open Apple developer account to create a PNS key. Here you need to click on account, select keys. And let's create a new APNS key for our push notifications. Enable Apple Push Notification Service, add name, and click Configure. Because it's a sample project, it's ok to use one APNS key for both development and production environments. However, it's recommended that you use a separate key for each environment. Once the key is configured, click Register and download the key. We will need it later. Now let's get back to Firebase console to add created a PNS key for the project. Select Project Settings, Cloud Messaging tab, scroll down to Apple App Configuration section and upload a PNS key that you have downloaded from Apple Developer account. You also need to specify a PNS key ID and your Apple Developer Team ID. Both of them you can find on Apple's Developer account. After adding IDs, let's complete uploading of a PNS key. Now it's time to configure iOS application in Xcode. If you are using Android Studio ID, you can select iOS folder, then go to Tools, Flutter and select Open iOS module in Xcode. In Xcode ID, select Runner, Runner Target, go to Sign in and Capabilities tab and click on New Capability. Search for Push Notifications and click to edit. We also need to add Background Modes capability that lets the application to respond to incoming push notifications even when it's not actively running in the foreground. Once it's added, enable remote notifications for this capability. By default, if the app is in terminated state, 
Firebase messaging plugin will show a notification, but if the app is in the foreground, notification won't be displayed. That's why we are going to use Flutter Local Notifications plugin for showing foreground notifications. We need to create service classes for both Firebase messaging and Local Notifications plugins. Create a new directory in the lib folder and create Dart file for Flutter Local Notifications service. Since we need one instance of Local Notifications service, Let's implement a singleton pattern by using private constructor, static final instance, and factory constructor that returns instance. To complete configuring Flutter Local Notifications plugin, we need to adjust a bit native iOS main function. Open Xcode, click on Runner, select Runner folder and open App Delegate file. Import Flutter Local Notifications and add the following piece of code. The first one tells Flutter to connect notifications plugin to the iOS system. And the second one ensures iOS can handle notifications and pass events like tabs back to Flutter by using the plugin. More information you can find on their page on PubDev. Now let's get back to Flutter project and create service for Firebase messaging.
Now it's time to set usage of both services. So open main file. Check if the binding is already set up. Initialize Firebase application with default Firebase options. This is the class that was generated by Flutterfire CLI. Use instance factory to get local notification service and call init method. Similarly, get Firebase messaging service and call init method by you need to pass the instance of local notification service. Now it's time to run the project and get test notifications from the Firebase. Allow notifications permission. And after that you will see push notification token in the logs, which you should copy and go to Firebase console. Find Run dropdown and select Messaging. Click on Create your first campaign, select Firebase Notification Messages and click on Create. Write notification title and text. Click Send test message. And here you need to add push notification token that you have copied from the logs in your IDE. Once you click on Test, Firebase will send a notification to your device. The app was in the foreground state, so the notification was displayed by using Flutter Local Notifications plugin. Now let's try another case when the app is closed or in a terminated state. Modify a bit title and send test notification again. You see that the background notification was displayed, even if the app was closed. To summarize, we have used Firebase messaging plugin for receiving remote messages from Firebase and displaying notifications when the app is terminated. When the app is not terminated, Flutter local notifications plugin triggers logic for displaying notifications. For most cases, it's absolutely enough. However, if you need more customizations, it's possible to use local notifications plugin for showing notifications for both cases when the app is terminated and when the app is in the foreground state. But this is a topic for another video. The code works for both Android and iOS applications. Almost no changes were needed for Android because Flutterfire CLI did it automatically. The link to the code you can find in the video description. Hope that this tutorial was helpful for you. Feel free to share your thoughts and questions in the comments. And for now, thanks for watching. See you next time.